Hi everyone, it's Justine. Fall winter is approaching, so it's time for a trend review. I do this kind of video twice a year, once for fall winter fashion and once for spring summer. Looking at everything that's been presented on the runways throughout the world, I try to find out what the big trends are, what is wearable in real life, and I try to give you different options. As always, the boards that I will show in this video can be downloaded for free on my website. This season is super interesting because all the designers throughout the world had one same challenge. What will people want to wear after lockdown? The collections coming to shops now have been designed back in January. So when everyone was in lockdown. And as it turns out, all the designers proposed completely different answers to that same challenge. Trend number one, creative knitwear. For a long time in fashion, knits did not generate too much interest. We had jogging pants and we had sweaters. <laughs> well, now knitted garments are gaining momentum and this season I'm loving the creativity. You can do a top plus bottom in matching colors like Al to Zara and Princess Cooler. Really cozy and yet chic. You can also drape it. At Acne Studio, it's wrapped around the body and while the color palette is monochromatic, they are playing with the textures. So jersey tank top plus a medium weight sort of cape, that's right, plus thicker socks. Chloe matched the bag and the shoes to the dress. And by the way, their new creative director used recycled and repurposed materials. She's brought a huge wind of sustainability to the house. At Ports 1961, the texture is in focus. This design must be so comfortable to wear and it's really a piece of art. And at Stella McCartney, the knits are shaped in an architectural way. Overall, all of this is completely wearable, right? If the colors do feel like a bit too much for your taste and your wardrobe, imagine the same shapes done in neutrals. We're definitely going to see more knits in the shops this winter. Yay. <laughs> and for me, that's a great answer to the question, what will people want to wear after lockdown? It's like, I've been living cozy at home, for a year and a half. I want to keep that coziness once I get to be out and about again. Number two, a more dressed up way of coming out of the lockdown. Easing out of your loungewear, but keeping the comfort. Because after a year plus at home, we do not want to choose between feeling good and looking good anymore. So there were lots of chic but close to pajamas options on the runways. You can wear an improved version of a nightgown. It's thicker, it's longer, but still has that shimmery fabric which gives it the sexiness and the glamour. If you're switching to fabrics more traditionally used for ready to wear, then with all the space you can get, right? So the white dress by Fendi and the yellow and salmon dress by Dries van Noten do not constrain the body at all. They're really spacious. And yet, would you say that these two ladies are dressed too casually? No, right? And on top of focusing on the comfort, the accessories are being tuned down this season. See this little black dress by Chanel? There is movement in the fringes, but it's monochromatic and she's barely wearing any jewelry on top, which is rare for Chanel. In the bottom right corner, the vêtement lady is too cool to care. <laughs> she simply kept her nightgown on and added some thigh-high leather boots for leg coverage. Notice that most dresses here are below the leg or even longer. It seems that mini skirts are not the most comfortable thing which we knew and so now it's being reflected in actual fashion <laughs> number three if you like it a bit more formal a bit more tailored you will enjoy this trend which i call preppy for grown-ups normally preppy makes me think of school uniforms innocent young ladies sent apart hair clips <laughs> but no not this time the photo on the left is close to the traditional preppy look but achromatic the shirt is oversized and not tucked in then at Max Mara, they took a traditional plate blazer, but paired it with culottes, which is a more grown-up version of the pleated skirt, I think. Philippe Lim kept the pleated skirt, but made it longer and added large bow elements on the top and the shoes. At Dior, the pleated skirt was slightly disturbing in the color palette that it was given, and these colors contrast with the airiness of the fabric. The mood is dark, and the preppy little color is in fact made of rhinestones, so it's a subversive preppy lady. Valentino kept the white collar, but with that gold texture and these statement accessories, she clearly isn't a high school girl anymore. Molly Goddard used the preppy sleeveless sweater, but worn over acid green see-through ruffles. All the codes of the preppy look are here, right? But they're being distorted, hijacked, bent. How much distortion you want can be decided through the color palette that you choose and the accessories that you complete your outfits with. Number four. For those of you who say, I want to go back to clothes with a shape, <laughs> here comes tone on tone tailoring. It's a new level of monochromatic, extremely chic and comfortable. 
for all the outfits I selected, the top and the bottom match, but also the coat on top, the shoes, and the accessories. Max Mara is great at working with beige, so they went for an all beige look, where even the scarf is matching. At Versace, the legs are bare, but that's an exception. Most of the time this season, the skirt is longer. Or it is combined with leggings, like at Chanel, or high boots, like at Jill Sander. The waist is only slightly marked, if at all. What do you think of that kind of look? It is tailored, it is definitely elegant and dressed up, but leaves you plenty of space. By the way, if you have a capsule wardrobe with one dominant color, this is the opportunity to wear outfits entirely in that color, just playing with the textures and the fabric weights, as you saw in these examples. Number five, let's talk about pants. Last season, I said that slim and skinny trousers were starting to slowly disappear. Well, this is confirmed. <laughs> We're now officially headed towards pants that have a proper length that actually works in winter. <laughs> Typical straight leg is shown by Nina Ricci. With higher waisted trousers, the leg gets a bit wider. See that Victoria Beckham dusty rose design? Chanel showed quite wide jeans. It's as baggy as it gets this season. And again, a surprising choice coming from Chanel. But mostly, denim is becoming darker, less bleached. As you can see at your and Celine, this is the trend. Celine is a seven eighth length, but overall the pants really are going full length this season. Yay! Denim uses a lot of water to be produced, so the less bleached you buy your garments or your denim, the better for the environment. And also a side effect of bleaching is that it damages the fiber, so less bleach means your piece will last longer. The next trend is quite extreme. <laughs> Imagine all the designers of the French houses being in Paris in lockdown in January with the curfew. They were like, I need to get out. I want to go skiing. <laughs> and so they designed the pieces to do just that. I call this trend après ski, as in you're wrapped in multiple layers of quilt and down jackets to keep you warm. But underneath, you're wearing your paddy platform shoes and sexy gloves, like at Marc Jacobs. At Balmain, the skirt is quilted, but the leather, the heels and the glasses tell you a whole different story. This lady is going straight to the upper ski. <laughs> At Chanel, the nuance is in the accessories. The Le Maire lady is wearing a super warm coat, but she is elegant underneath. And at Givenchy, you open the coat and ta-da, here is a party dress. This is not what I would personally wear on the daily, but I really do want to go skiing. Number seven, you saw on the previous boards some neon colors and some platform shoes. Not a coincidence, because there is one trend that's been growing and growing for a year and a half now. It's the so-called Y2K revival. Y2K as in year 2000. Think Britney Spears, who's been making headlines recently. Choker tattoo necklaces. Tom Ford making sex sell as the creative director of Gucci. All that jazz. Tom Ford thought, hey, I made that look popular 20 years ago, let's do it again. That's his typical aesthetics. Saint Laurent caught the girls' band vibe too, and even used several colors in one outfit. Rare for Saint Laurent. Versace took the mini dress out of their archive, typical shape for them as well. Jacques Musti did baggy, with the place to hook up your keys to the pants, and the center zipper on the top, also signs from the year 2000. Isabelle Maron revives the ski jacket with those contrasting shoulders and the snap buttons. Here you do see some mini skirts and some mini shorts, but really this trend is like a parallel universe compared to everything else that the runways have been showing this season. It has a life of its own and it also has barely been affected by the pandemic. It looks quite the same before versus after, but still it's quite a big thing. I thought I'd mention it as well. Which trend do you prefer? Which one feels like what you want to be wearing at the moment? Feeling good is becoming more and more important in fashion, and I think that is a great direction. Another thing I noticed, the fashion houses in Paris and New York were mainly working on comfortable things. Huge knits, spacious shapes, soft materials. The Italians, on the other hand, were like, I just want to go party, give me the lurex, give me the mini. So while all the designers were confronted with the same challenge, which is the lockdown, their answers, their creations, very widely impacted by their personalities, of course, but also by their cultures. That's a very good example of how every human has a different point of view creatively, and I find that extremely reassuring, isn't it? Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for your support, always. If you wish to see more trends that could potentially work with your wardrobe, I link two additional videos here as well as down below. To get the next videos that I'm planning and that are coming soon on this channel, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I upload on Wednesdays. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, take care. Bye.